We tried to get a response from the Saudi Arabian government via the embassy in London. We've had no response. At the moment, we've tried to get in touch with officials in the United Arab Emirates, which is part of the coalition. Also, uh, no luck at the moment. So we turned instead to Fahad Nazir, a consultant to the Saudi embassy of Saudi Arabia in Washington, D.C. Does he accept that the scale of the cholera epidemic in Yemen is a man-made catastrophe, the result of the current conflict? I think there's little doubt that the uh, humanitarian toll during this conflict has been really unacceptable, I think, but an objective analysis really, I think, lays much of the blame for the suffering of the Yemeni people on the Yemeni rebels, the Houthis, and their allies. And there are numerous organizations, including Human Rights Watch and others, who have documented policies that the rebels have used over the past couple of years that have really turned food and medicine into weapons of war. They've confiscated relief convoys, they've put entire cities under siege, prevented medicine, supplies, uh, food, uh, I think much of the blame goes directly to the rebels. Therefore, some of the blame attaches to the Saudi-led coalition. Again, there's, there's a perception that, you know, the Arab coalition has, has intentionally targeted civilians and infrastructure. That is, uh, some, there's simply no evidence indicating that. There have been Well, mistakes. I mean, if I could just intervene on that particular point, I mean, a number of reports by international human rights organizations have suggested otherwise, that the Saudi-led coalition does not pay sufficient attention to the safety of uh, civilians during its bombing raids. Right, so, so the, uh, the coalition spokespeople have acknowledged mistakes in the past and they have since implemented various measures to minimize collateral damage. I myself personally sat through a presentation by one of these spokespeople where he went through uh, great details explaining all the various measures. Listen in as the World Health Organization gains credibility from this tragedy. Yemen cholera outbreak is far from being controlled. The rainy season uh, has just started and may increase the path of transmission. Sustained efforts are required to stop the spread of this disease. Now listen as a spokesperson for the Capital Base UN spoke earlier. Seven million people, including 2.3 million malnourished children, of whom 500,000 are severely malnourished, under the age of five, are on the cusp of famine, vulnerable to disease, and ultimately at risk of a slow and painful death. Capital Base UN is now claiming that the Saudi coalition is actively blocking their entrance from humanitarian work. And what is a in what is a very clever scheme to retain credibility, all while acknowledging support for the terror network. Listen. We do want not just to be able to, to bring in aid, which is, of course, a crucial aspect of the work we do, but we also want the world to know what's going on. And so steps like this do not help uh, because, uh, again, this has been a large man-made humanitarian problem. The world needs to know, and uh, journalists need to have access. As our colleagues have said, this partially explains why Yemen, which is one of the world's largest humanitarian crises, is not getting enough attention in international media. The lack of coverage is hindering humanitarian workers' effort to draw the attention of, interna of the international community and donors to the man-made uh, catastrophe that the country is experiencing. For more fakery, we turn to another capital-based UN operative in Yemen, as well as a British agent in Britain. Here is the UN operative making excuses with their angle. Well, that's exactly it. It's catastrophic. Uh, Yemen is now entering third year, its third year of conflict, and we just see that humanitarian needs are escalating every single day, and every single day the situation on the ground gets worse. So we're continuing to always see and hear reports of civilian casualties. So this we have unprecedented cholera crisis in the country. The country is also on the brink of famine. And we have millions of people who have been displaced from their homes trying to seek safety. So the situation is absolutely abysmal here on the ground. And we as humanitarians uh, are truly overwhelmed in, in trying to cope and respond as best we can. Listen, it's the largest humanitarian crisis in the world based on the amount of people in need. Uh, at present, there are about 20 million Yemenis who require humanitarian assistance in the country. So it is the largest humanitarian crisis, but across the world, it receives very little attention in comparison. So we've been advocating for peace. 
We do need more support for the humanitarian response, but that alone is not going to cut it. We do need a peaceful political solution. So there needs to be a, an end to the war that needs to be uh, negotiated. The, the peace process needs to be supported, and that's what we're really advocating for. Let's now see what the British agent has to say. The British are renowned for their experts of propaganda. Yeah, that's correct. The numbers, the latest number that I saw today was 390,000 cases just since the 27th of April. So in less than three months, uh, it's 390,000 suspected cholera um, cases. And of course, we know that the rainy season is coming up. The rainy season in, in Yemen is basically July to September. So with, with the rain, we, we suspect that the case load will continue to rise uh, for the next couple of months. We've seen some indication of maybe um, the death slowing down, and that we're happy for that. But we think the worst might, we, might not be over. We don't know. At least we have to prepare for the worst in every possible way. So we need a massive effort to respond to these cases. As you said earlier there, it's, um, for the last week it about, was about 5,000 new suspected cholera cases every day. So we need a massive um, aid effort to, to stop the cholera crisis in Yemen. And we also need a massive aid effort to, to respond to the wider crisis. Um, 7 million people are on the brink of famine. 50 million people have no access to clean drinking water or, or sufficient sanitation and hygiene um, facilities. Um, and of course, as, uh, as the latest speaker said, we need a ceasefire to be able to travel and access the whole country safely. We need a ceasefire immediately in Yemen. Now listen, as the puppet pedophile continues to use ISIS as pretext for invasion. Jordanian pilots are crucial partners against ISIS in Syria and Iraq. Notice how he specifies ISIS and Iraq in Syria, as if it wasn't part of their acronym. Saudi Arabia and a regional coalition have taken strong action against Houthi militants in Yemen. So to, uh, to be honest, we think it's shameful that both the UK government and the US government is selling arms to, to the Saudi-led coalition, arms that are used in Yemen. So there's, on several occasions we have called for the suspension of arms sales. Um, Working uh, fast so now. We call on the international community, the US, the UK and other arms brokers to become peace brokers instead of arms brokers. That's what it is needed. We don't need more weaponry. Uh, bombs will only fuel the conflict. Uh, U.S. and the U.K. government needs to bring the parties to the table to find a peaceful so solution, not to, to sell more bombs.